What's up guys, this is Xander Bennett from The Rare Candy here, and today we are going to be doing a testing grounds featuring decks from the new team up set. I am on the left and I am going to be playing uh, Malamar featuring Eevee Snorlax and Mimikyu Gengar, while Nick is on the right and he is going to be playing Doublade Genesect. So these are Malamar something we've seen before, but Doublade Genesect is something completely new, so excited to see how these two decks face up against each other and how the new tag teams change the build of Malamar that we are used to seeing. So uh, I start off with a nice mulligan and uh, I believe I take two mulligans this game so sorry that you guys get to watch me shuffle but um, I was uh, not to reveal too much but I was pretty impressed with both of these decks. I think that both of these decks uh, show off a lot and uh, I think that they're, they're definitely going to be strong going into this next set. Yep there's mulligan number two. Uh, nothing too interesting that Nick needs to know about that hand, except he saw, I think, a pal pad in there. Um, but, but yeah, no, I, what I was saying is I think that both these decks uh, surprised me a lot. They definitely ended up being better than uh, I thought they were. And uh, I think that they will have strengths to keep up with the rest of the metagame, so I'm excited to see more of what they do. So uh, looking at this hand, I do have a basic. I have an Eevee Snorlax and a Cosmo GX. I'm trying to decide what I'd like to start with, and I choose to start with the Eevee Snorlax as Nick takes his mulligans and uh, no shortage of anything we are about to start yep fist bump to get the game going he starts with a ditto prism and I start with Eevee Snorlax um, considers benching okay definitely benches to Haunt Edge he's got to evolve into his dub blade and he gets a lightning energy onto one of them which is really important because that makes it so that he is able to just find another lightning energy instead of having to find a double colorless to attack with that one or he can just attack with a counter gain on it he puts a choice band onto his active which um whatever tool you put on your ditto generally determines what you want it to be um so because he put a choice band on it he should essentially guarantee that this becomes a um a double aid instead of a um instead of a zeb uh i have this crazy pop-off turn where i play three mysterious treasures uh so i'm going to search my deck for one two and i believe also, this Tabu Lele. Um, I just want to draw more cards than what that Erika's would let me draw. So Lele is going to grab a Lily, which I believe this is a Lily for seven. Um, I believe that last card is an energy though, so that can go down somewhere. So make this a full Lily for eight. And yep, it's a double colorless, so the double colorless is going to go onto the active, and then a Lily for eight. So drawing these eight cards, a great turn one start for me. Um, and it actually appears that I drew into a ton of energy. I saw four energies in there, as well as a Mimikyu Gengar. Um, and so I'm gonna use the first attack on Eevee Snorlax, which I believe is called Cheer Up. You just attach an energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. Um, so there's the Double Blade and a Double Colorless. So he's starting that off exactly as he wants to, as well as I saw a Genesect in that hand. So this Adventure Bag is going to help him get enough tools uh, he needs eight tools in play total plus a choice band on the active to knock out this Eevee Snorlax if he's trying to do that this turn but what we figured out versus most of the tag teams is that since their attack costs are so high they can't always guarantee a way to heal and attack so you're generally fine two-shotting both of these so there's a second adventure bag Adventure Bag is very good in this deck. It just turns into a uh, draw two cards and uh, plus power your attack for 60 damage. So definitely a card to uh, run the max of in this deck. There's a Genesect with two tools down on it. A Choice Band comes down onto a Hone Edge on the bench. And we see an Ultra Ball. Presumably this is going to go for a Zeb Striker. Oh, but this I believe he prizes Zeb Striker game one. So we're just going to... He's going to change around his Ultra Ball play, keep his Lele, just because neither of us are really paying attention, and uh, just go for another Dublade, and this Lele is going to now get him a supporter. So, not out of the woods, just uh, remember, like we said, these are just testing videos. We're focusing more on how the decks are played rather than exact tournament accuracy. So this Lele is going to draw him six cards. I like him getting the Lily over the Cynthia here. Um, and this is something that I recommend. If you're if you have no cards in your hand, I would say always get Lily, because Cynthia lets you get rid of a bad hand and change it into a new hand. But if you have a handful of unplayables that you can't use, 
then Lily doesn't really help you change the contents of that hand. So uh, there is a tool drop for 150 damage. He has four tools in play plus the choice band on the active. So that is going to let him do 150. Look at my discard pile. With all those mysterious treasures that I played, I didn't have any way to discard a energy. Um, but now with a hand of four energies, it's just like I need to get Malamar down for these. But um, there's a Mimikyu Gengar GX and a Malamar. And luckily, I top decked the Cynthia to make that hand decent. Um, got a little bit punished by discarding the Erkas, but luckily it was fine. A second Malamar and two Psychic Energies later. Let's see what happens here. Definitely been the Giratina and then the second Acrobike been the psychic so the altar of the moon is going to allow this uh mimikyu or this eevee snorlax to retreat and this is looking pretty good for me so looking at my discord pile deciding what i would like to do yeah i'm going to have to discard the double colorless but uh i did the thing where you discard the double colorless and the psychic off of the pokemon so that you could have the 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 way that retreating is worded is that you have you have to meet the cost of retreating so if you discard the psychic and then the double colorless the psychic cost is one and the double colorless provides the second one the game doesn't just overrule the double colorless provides for both so was able to do that to move the energy off of the genesect to put it on this giratina and uh use poltergeist looking at his hand of i believe exclusively all trainers at that point so doing a ton of damage there Throws in a skateboard down onto the Lele, and he's got a, a, a pretty decent hand. He's got to try to rip the Zeb Striker here soon to continue drawing cards. Um, but there's a Nest Ball just looking through his deck to see what all he has. This could be for a Genesect. I believe this might also just be to check the contents of his deck because he seemed to have a pretty decent hand. Okay, so we see a Ultra Ball and a Counter Gain. He does have... He can put the double colorless on the other double to attack, which is kind of a bummer, but it might be what he needs to do. So there's an Ultra Ball, discarding a Hone Edge, I believe, and a Counter Gain. Okay, so he's just going to Lele for Guzma on my Eevee Snorlax that has so much damage on it, just to take the three prizes to see if he can rip Zeb Strika and help develop his board. Um, it kind of stinks that he has to put the double colors onto a Pokemon that already has the lightning, but when you're taking half of your prizes, it doesn't really matter at all. Um, so I Ultra Ball, and I'm discarding two Psychics, which is exactly what I need to do, and I'm going to grab a Eevee Snorlax. I don't think this is going to be used. I think this is just thinning out my deck. Those energies are probably going to go onto this Giratina, um, and that looks exactly like what's going to happen with a double Psychic Recharge. Both energies go on to the Giratina. The Altar of the Moon is going to allow me to retreat on my next turn. And now I'm retreating and just going to use Giratina's attack for the knockout. The nice thing about Giratina in this matchup is that it's a one prize attacker that lets me just kind of mix up the knockouts that he's taking, but also the damage from Giratina's attack doesn't matter at all. So very nice. A Rescue Stretcher gets Nick a double aid back and he already has a double colorless in his hand and it does appear that he got the Zeb Striker. So sprint is going to allow him to discard his hand and draw four cards and this is where we start to see the strength of the double a genesec deck show whenever zep Shriga gets out the deck just goes insanely fast and does so much damage you draw so many cards and it just helps your deck so much so he in that hand i see an escape board that he can throw down if he wants to where he's in his head i think he was talking about if he's playing around field blower because this is game one even though he knows it. I don't play Field Blower, but we were just talking about what would it be like in a tournament setting, um, like expecting um, what your opponent plays and whatnot. But his logic here is that since he's playing so many tools and he hasn't discarded a ton of them, it was hard for me to see the discard pile as I fanned through it, um, that he still should have a handful of tools. But we see a Cynthia. He's going to draw six cards off of this, so pretty great turn for Nick. There's a Ultra Ball that will let him do some get a double aid next turn, and right now just a tool drop with the one, two, three, four, five, six tools that he has on his bench. So this is nice because he was able to take a knockout on the active without having a tool on the active. So the active is going to stick around 
Uh, and if it gets knocked out, he's not losing part of his tool quantity. So there is a Dawnwing's Necrozma. I am able to use Moon's Eclipse this turn if I get access to another Psychic Energy. But it appears that I don't have anything, and my hand isn't even that good. So yeah, so just a Poltergeist for the knockout. I go down to three prizes, uh, hoping to get something that will let me attack on my next turn. I get the Acerola off the prizes, so that's going to be really good if he cannot one-shot me here just to end the game. Um, a Guzma on his side still ends the game, but he's been binning a handful of Guzmas just to get through his deck. So we'll see what all he has. He doesn't have a doubt to it in his hand because he has both of his Leleus on the board. So we see the Ultra Ball here. going for a Tabu Coco Prism Star. Okay, so with the lightning in his hand, this is going to allow him to already have energy ready for the double A to attack. And we see him chuck the Tabu Coco over to the Lost Zone and get his, there's only one lightning energy in there as far as I can see. No, there's a second one. He's trying to figure out where he wants to put the second lightning and uh, he puts it onto one of the Leleys in case the escape board goes away. Uh, an adventure bag just to continue looking through the deck. This is just to thin two tools out because if he hits a Guzma, he has game on the uh, Duskbane or Dawnways Necrozma or the Tabu Lele. But uh, I don't think he wants to sprint away this hand. This hand is two of his draw supporters. Oh, no, he's going to do it. So sprint. One, two, three, four. Guzma. All right. And that is the end of game one. He's just going to bring up either the Tabu Lele or the Dawn Wings and take his last two prizes with Tool Drop and all the tools that he had in play. So that game was over and a, a quick showing of the power of Tool Drop and how it's just able to come out of the gate and do a ton of damage. So for that, for this next game, I'm looking to just not let him take three prizes on my tag teams, looking to use that Acerola to my advantage, but also just change the, uh, the Pokemon that I'm attacking with a little bit to kind of help uh, in this matchup in terms of with him taking so many prizes um but uh nick just hopes for the same thing to happen that was uh really working really well for him and i believe right now we're looking up what the exactly a card does we're just trying to make sure that we are not playing things wrong um so so nick mulligans and i also mulligan so back to shuffle cam uh we're just both going to be setting up for the next game but but no i think that um but no, I think that last game, like I was saying uh, at the beginning, I was very impressed with both these decks, and the last game showed off Tool Drop very well. Um, even Malamar set up. It, it did what it wanted to. It got two Malamars out. I got energies on the table most of the time. It was just overpowered by the large knockouts that Tool Drop was able to take, and I think that's one of the things that makes it so strong, the Tool Drop deck, because it can just, um, like, it can deal with the tag teams. Not all the other decks can, so. I believe I'm starting with a Mimikyu Gengar. And Nick gets a second mulligan, so. Looking at my hand, I have a Ultra Ball, a Lily, and Attachment. Oh, no, the Mimikyu Gengar is in my hand, so didn't can't necessarily tell what I started with. Maybe it's another Eevee Snorlax, and I want to use that double colorless onto it. We'll see. Um, okay, Nick does have a basic, so I take my two mulligans, and it's... Okay, so I started with an Inkay. So a Mysterious Treasure is going to bin away this Guzma. Probably get another NK down onto the board. Yep, so NK down. And now an Ultra Ball. This is going to be presumably getting a attacker or something for me to put that energy on, I would like to think. Okay, so I'm discarding the other Mysterious Treasure here. So two games in a row, I had three Pokemon searching card. Pretty lucky. But, um, yeah, the Ultra Ball, this is going to be getting the Eevee Snorlax. I figured that would be the only reason that I would play the Ultra Ball instead of the Mysterious Treasure. So Eevee Snorlax down, I'm going to put that double colorless on there, and play Lily for six. So before the Lily, I did have the option of benching the uh, Mimikyu Gengar, 
but with one tag team in play it, it's hypothetically best to try and have as few of those in play as possible because if you have two of those in play your opponent can just kill both of them and take six prizes so because i have the ace Arola in my hand as well just looking to leverage the power of that card and uh try and use one of these tag teams at a time So here's Nick, he's trying to figure out what tool he wants to put down. He puts an escape board down on his active, nope, escape board down on the Z on the Blitzel. And we see a Lily, I believe, for six coming out from him. Yep. Off of that, he drew a Genesect, so that's looking pretty good. As well as a Energy. Flopping around with his cards. The Genesect is going to probably get a tool put down on it right now. His hand doesn't appear like it has a supporter though, so I think he's gonna have to hold on to that Ultra Ball to get a Zeb Strike, and he's just gonna pass. Um, so there's a Mimikyu, Gengar, a, uh, a, a Psychic, and a Switch. Sorry for the stumble. And this is going to be a pretty awesome turn for me because I'm going to be able to use the GX attack on Mimikyu Gengar to, um, to give myself an extra turn of setup, that appears what's going to be happening with that switch. So Cynthia drawing six, four, five, six. And uh, yeah, I think this is just gonna go straight to Horror House and just kind of give me another turn, yep. Bam, so there we go. Next turn is draw and pass because he cannot play any cards from his hand. I didn't have the extra energy requirement, but that is completely fine for me because this is just giving me a turn of getting my board established. Trying to decide, do I want to bin the Acerola here? I think I just bin the Pal Pad instead, which is fine. Um, I wanted to have the Acerola in my hand instead of in my deck. Um, I could have discarded the Acerola and then Pal Pad in the back, but it was more important. Okay, well, if I'm gonna play the Cynthia, then I don't know why I did that. <laughs> um, discarding the Acerola off of the Ultra Ball would have let me shuffle back the Cynthia and the Supporter. Or, I guess we were just looking, I was just looking at seeing if there was anything else I wanted back. So I have a Psychic Energy. That's going to allow me to attack. But I'm also going, since I also have the Double Colorless and the Eevee Snorlax has less value over the entirety of the game, I'm going to go ahead and use that to just do plain 120 to this hone edge and get it off the table. Um, so now Nick is left without any hone edges, so I feel like I'm in a great spot. Um, but let's see what Nick does. Nick plays a nest ball. It's going to get him another hone edge. Going back in. I believe he's going I believe there's an ultra ball I think what he's considering to do is what he wants to discard um, throws a metal goggles and a skateboard onto the Genesect as well as a lightning energy nope the lightning energy would have allowed it to retreat if it ever needed to but I think what he's thinking is that in his um, on his board he already he already has a blitzel that can um, retreat for free even when it evolves into a Zeb Strike so uh, he plays a Lele shovels in a hand revealed of three dub blades and now is going to Cynthia and draw six cards so let's see what all he gets off of this he's looking to get some more hone edges down that's really what he needs I was able to capitalize on his board state by getting rid of the one hone edge um, if you listen to the set review I talked up Mimikyu Gengar's GX attack like a storm so there it is in action uh, there's a Zeb Striker though. A turn two Zeb Striker seems really solid. Um, he has the Tabu Coco Prism Star. He's trying to decide what he wants to do with it. Um, I believe that since he already has a Lightning in there, he's just going to go ahead and use it just to... Oh yeah, since he already has the two Lightnings in there? Absolutely, yeah. And there's another Nest Ball, so he gets all three of his Hone Edges down that were not knocked out on that first turn, so... This is really strong, and the adventure bag is going to allow Nick to get some more tools, put them into play. So he's not going to be able to attack this turn, but he's definitely going to be set up for the rest of the game. He has two hone edges that are just one lightning energy away of attacking, and one that can just attack with a double colorless once he draws it. So 
so this is looking really good. Yep, and so Sprint was discarding the Guzma, not anything else. And he's just going to retreat to the Tapu Lele as something that hopefully can survive a turn, but also it has an escape board. Now, Eevee Snorlax deals with basic GX is really bad, so I'm going to have to use Mimikyu Gengar if I want to take a knockout this turn. Just checking out my options. It appears like my hand does not have a supporter. So what I was deciding on is if I wanted to put down the choice band because my tools do count towards Nick's total of how many, how much damage he does. So I'm going to use the rescue stretcher for this Tabu Lele and Wonder Tag. See what all we get. This is going to get an air cuz. So this is going to be great. Just going to be a straight draw six because Nick's entire board is filled. So the Erika's lets us draw six, five, six. Yep. An Acrobike just to dig a little bit deeper. We're gonna discard the Erika's so that we can play the Mysterious Treasure and just get the energy out of our hand. Getting another Malamar down. So once again, doing what we wanna do, getting our Malamars out. Second Acrobike, discard a Lily, keeps us a Cynthia. And there is a Dawnwings Necrozma, so we're going to go ahead and use that. We've already used our GX attack for this game, but 120 without resistance takes a knockout on a Honet on a Dublade, so it helps out pretty well. Even if because if the Dublade has a uh, frying pan on it, it wouldn't knock it out if it didn't have the... if it still took resistance. But uh, Poltergeist is going to knock out the Tabu Lele. He does have three or more trainers in hand. And the choice band is going to get me the rest of the way there. So we have a nest ball now. Nope. Considering is what he wants to do. He has a double aid, a ultra ball, and a guzma. So right now he doesn't really have any way to attack. He could guzma something if he wanted to. And then sprint and try and hit an energy. But I think he's just more likely to just try and draw some cards and see what happens. This could also just be an ultra ball for a... Double aid, but that feels pretty risky just to bin your supporters and then draw four and hope to hit another one. Right now, he needs seven tools in play or six and a choice band on his attacker to take the knockout. So, right now, we're oh, yeah, so right now, he we're just saying that he evolved the one that did not have the choice band. Um, when he could have evolved the one that had the choice band. So just moving the energy attachment and his uh, evolution onto the one that already had the choice band. Puts a counter gain down onto the uh, onto the hone edge, but we, we decided to put it on the one that already has lightning on it so that he can just go, that attacker is already powered up for as long as he is behind. He can just use the other one with a double colorless. So the placing of where your tools go is very important if you've learned anything from this past 30 seconds of video but um i think it definitely offers a pretty high skill ceiling in terms of uh where your attachments go where your tools go what what tools you get off the adventure bag uh so there's a sprint discarding his hand and drawing four cards and i do not believe that he got all the tools that he needed to take this knock out one two three four five six oh okay so this is what we did wrong uh so um, we forgot to count the choice band on my active, which we realized uh, about the next turn. And so he w had a choice band that he could have put down to take the knockout. Because right now, he's doing... Uh, we thought that he was only doing 180 with what he had on his board. But the uh, with the five tools and the choice band um, on his active. But if, he, if we did count the one that was on my active and the choice band that he put down then the Mimikyu Gengar would have been knocked out. And so he's playing down the choice band anyway, but um, that's on us because we didn't realize that he would have been able to take that knockout. Um, but yes, tool drop does count your opponent's tools in play. I remember agonizing over whether or not I wanted to put the tool down, and then when it came to the next turn, we didn't even remember that you weren't allowed, or that the tools did count the opponents. So I think that's what we were talking about right now as he is shuffling. So 
Cynthia is going to get him six cards. He's got two attackers ready, but would hopefully like to find a stretcher for a double aid. The ditto will work because that'll allow him to evolve into another Pokemon when he needs to. And an adventure bag. I believe this is going to allow him to, if he doesn't knock it out, he's very close. Just looking through his deck to see what he has left. He has a frying pan. And I think that's it. If he had any more tools, he would have gotten them. He might have drawn them. So here's a retreat, and he's going to go ahead and use the one with the counter gain on it because he's not taking the knockout. Didn't really talk much about the Acerola because we were talking about the uh, the misplay that we made, but the Acerola definitely helped out because that's three prizes that were almost completely stopped because of just taking a turn to be able to heal your Pokemon. Um, the one of Acerola and the Pal Pad to get it back if you need to definitely offer enough utility that I think it's worth it in the list. Uh, the tag teams are so huge that it's just a very nice tool to have. Um, so that was a uh, attachment from the hand, but I'm going to change where I'm attaching to. Um, this is, oh, the main reason for this is because I want to, um, if he knocks out the Eevee Snorlax, he's going to take three prizes. So if I power up the Mimikyu Gengar and he knocks it out, he will take three prizes again. So by powering up the Dawnwings Necrozma, he's only going to be uh, taking five prizes. So then you will still have to find another knockout. An Ultra Ball discards a Giratina and a Psychic just to fit out my hand, getting a NK, though obviously I have no more bench spaces to put it down. Just one less thing that I want to draw. And then a second Psychic Recharge goes on to the Dawnwings. Uh, gonna Invasion here to make it my active. Uh, this being reason number two that it was better than attaching to the Mimikyu Gengar, and I am at one prize left, and I don't think Nick can win this one. Luckily, I don't think that our... Yep, and he scoops up his cards. Luckily, I don't think that our misplay and not counting the damage mattered too much, um, because he would have gone to three prizes, but after that point, he still never took another knockout. But um, just make sure that if you are playing the tool drop deck, that you are counting the tools that your opponent has in play, and be sure that your opponent makes those visible. Feel free to ask them so that you can see what cards they have on the table that's completely legal um, and I recommend that you do it because I think that's part of why we were miscounting is because we couldn't necessarily see my choice band so Nick Mulligans a lot of Mulligans here for this testing ground sorry about that um, his deck plays four double aid two Genesect two Lele a Blitzel and a Ditto so that's 11 basics that's not terribly low but it's generally on the lower end yep second mulligan um shovels his hand back in while we are doing this if you have any questions about anything from the testing grounds video make sure to put them in the comments uh generally i try to look at the comments for a few days after the videos have been uploaded just to see any questions that any people have so if you see something that you're like why did we do that and i didn't cover it in this audio uh, i will make sure to do my best to answer it so there's the seven cards and he does have a basic off of this so we are good to start so i take the two mulligans and here we go so i start with a necrozma not really a great start a necrozma is a really inefficient attacker versus his deck and there's nothing really that i want to black ray um it just doesn't set up good math at all for this so he's going to get a hone edge and a ditto throws a metal goggles onto the double aid i keep wanting to call the double aid or no hone edge <laughs> I, I was i keep calling them the the wrong thing even though it's pretty clear the one the basic has one sword and the evolution has two swords um, so here's an adventure bag going to be getting a choice band and a choice band so um, putting the choice band onto the ditto essentially should lock it into being a zeb striker but um don't want to reveal a little bit too much about this game but i think that's part of uh nick misses a beat at one point and i believe that's part of why 
uh, just be very careful about where you're putting your tools down. Um, so there's a Cynthia shuffling to draw his cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this hand is actually looking pretty good. He had two double blades as well as a double colorless to attack on his next turn. Um, I draw a Psychic, which seems pretty good here, especially with this Ultra Ball that I have. I'm going to discard both of those. Get a Inkay. And then I have a Cynthia, so I'm going to shuffle my own hand in and then draw six cards. It's a little bit hard with so much shuffling to uh, offer insightful commentary. I'm sorry about that. Uh, there, so gonna draw my six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nothing super great in this hand. Gonna bench the NK down just so that I can have access to more psychic recharges. I have two energy in the discard pile already. So if there's ever a situation where you kill some Alamar, we just wanna have those ready. So there's the double A, the double colorless. And then a Tapu Lele. And he's also, nope, not playing the adventure bag. Just gonna get a supporter. Going to get a Erkas. Okay, so he is gonna play the adventure bag. going to get an escape board and a frying pan sadly the tools in this matchup that the only tools that matter in this matchup were a skateboard and um the choice pan i do think that the frying pans matter a lot we were trying to figure out math on like what it's what his likeliness is to knock out one of my pokemon um so he was gonna put the tools down already but we said well if you're gonna play the air because you might draw into an out to genesect and he actually just drew the genesect so that is good enough um, for him to figure out what he needs to do and a tool drop is going to knock out the necrozma starting off exactly how he wants to turn to knockout i'm going to play a ericas of my own so with this large hand i have a lot of options i have an escape board that i could use to retreat and i have a switch so depending on if i'd like to put another tool down those are both options that I can consider. Gonna throw down the Dawn Wings, attach return, and then Ultra Ball. Nope, the Serious Treasure. Sorry, discarding the Choice Band. I believe I go for a Mimikyu Gengar here. I put a Giratina to the front. Might be getting the Giratina to bend the Giratina with the Ultra Ball. Yep, I believe that's what's happening exactly. So now the Ultra Ball is gonna come out, discarding the Giratina and a Guzma. And this is, I think, where I go for the Mimikyu Gengar. Nope, still Malamar. All right, never mind. Oh, I believe, oh yes, since I'm behind on prizes, I go straight for the GX attack here. Uh, that is, Moon's Eclipse GX is going to allow me to um, to uh, not let him do any damage to me. I wonder why I put the escape board down onto the NK whenever uh, I have invasion live on the table. Um, seems like a misplay from my end, just don't need to add extra tools that he's able to do. I guess I was thinking that if he had any way to knock out the EV, uh, sorry, the Dawnwings Necrozma that I would want a retreater, but I still have the switch in my hand, I believe. So not necessarily the best play from my end, So there is a double blade. He evolves the Ditto Prism into a Zeb Striker. Um, kind of sad because that choice band is going to waste. But uh, we here's we see a Ultra Ball discarding two Lilies. Nope. <laughs> Sorry. We there. There's a lot of uh, us talking about figuring out what's the most optimal decision, and uh, he just decides. Well, there's nothing that I really want to get with this Ultra Ball, don't want to discard two of my draw supporters, so I'm gonna go ahead and go for the Cynthia. But no, sorry, like I was just saying, we're trying to figure out these decks. 
Uh, both of us are a tiny bit rusty because we haven't played in as many League Cups, so this is some of the first Pokemon that we've played in a while. But um, just trying to figure out what's the most optimal way for these decks to be played. Uh, Nick definitely has the harder challenge than I do between trying to figure out where to put his tools down and what tools to search out for and uh, how to bench his Pokemon exactly like that. So Nick's in the tank. I don't believe I saw any energies. Yeah, that is a hand with no energy. He, I don't think he discarded the energy to sprint uh, and draw. Or I don't think he discarded any energy to take a knockout with uh, Taipu Koko and a lightning energy. But here we see him just retreating to Genesect because right now on my board, Genesect looks like it's the only thing that can take a hit. Um, Nick is going to Ultra Ball here, and this is, uh, no, he's going to leave the Lele active instead of retreating, uh, just assuming that Lele is the only thing that can retreat um, on his board, and that is correct. He has no other free retreaters, so. Still contemplating what he wants to do, and he just decides to pass. So I, I top deck a Mimikyu Gengar, a pretty nice draw. Um going to retreat to the NK and use double psychic recharge onto the Mimikyu Gengar just so that it can uh, attack and then now the switch comes out so if I if he has four items in his or four trainers in his hand he gets knocked out um, a mysterious treasure I believe is about to discard this Marshadow yep get a third Malamar And uh, that's presumably just going to go straight down. Probably just going to get a energy onto the Dawnwings Necrozma after I shuffle. I think part of what Nick was considering last turn was whether or not uh, Mimikyu Gengar could knock him out. It was realistically the only attacker that could have done it. So he was trying to think if he wanted to discard some trainers. But uh, all I had was energy on the uh, Dawnwings Necrozma. Nothing else. No other energy in the discard pile. So... It seemed pretty unlikely, but top deck in the Mimikyu Gengar on my end was pretty lucky. So, deciding on whether or not I want to play the Adventure Bag, I just say no, uh, even though I already looked through my deck. Sorry about that, just thinking, well, his hand is pretty large, and I'm just going to take the risk and uh, see if I do have the knockout. Just don't want to put any more tools down for Nick to be able to use, especially because he already has... Uh, two choice bands on his Pokemon. It's going to be very easy for him to knock out something. So Nick draws the Blitzel. Presumably just going to be this Ultra Ball fodder immediately. I'm right. Uh, this is going to get a Double Aid onto his active. And then shuffling up for something. We had some reason for wanting to shuffle there or something, but I couldn't tell exactly what it was in his hand. Maybe he's going for the Sprint right now. But uh, I don't think so. A frying pan's gonna go onto this Genesect, and then a Erica for five. So Nick's hand right now, uh, he has two Lightning Energies and his Tabu Coco on board and an Ultra Ball, but he has no way to attack with this Double Aid. And uh, I'm sorry if I spoiled it earlier, but part of that is because since he didn't have a free retreater on board and he didn't search out an, a, a, a escape board with the early adventure bag to put on the ditto that eventually became a Zeb Striker, he is unable to use his attack because what he would be able to do is he would be able to save one of those lightning energies, discard just one, and then retreat from the Zeb Striker into it, and then take, I think, a knockout because I have the escape board down on my Pokemon. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If he had one more tool, which I believe he does have a tool in his hand, then he'd be able to take that knockout. But like I said, with the absence of a free retreater, he is unable to do that. Yeah, so he has the adventure bag, so he could have taken the knockout if he had a escape board, which is a huge bummer uh, not having that free retreat Pokemon. And it wouldn't have worked even if he put the escape board on the Tapu Coco and sent it up active because Tapu Coco needs to be on the bench for you to use its ability. It can't be active. So the double goes down, he's going to use the Tabu Coco. 
get two lightning energies onto the board but like i said this is a huge bummer because he is pretty behind this lele goes for a lily just to thin out see if he draws a double colorless this turn's taking a little while so i don't remember if he sprinted yet and yeah i don't think so so that's it and no double colorless in sight so uh again he's stuck without an attacker and luckily he's still kind of in it because he has four prizes left and i have uh more than that or the pokemon on the board he could take four prizes in the uh turns that i'm going to take three unless i knock out a gx but like i said this is a huge bummer for nick because had he had that escape board he would have been able to retreat and take a knockout on this Mimikyu Gengar and then go down to one prize left so I, I, I know I've said it before but just be very careful about where you put your tools because uh, where you put your tools matters a lot I'm gonna retreat the Mimikyu Gengar just go for an attack with the Dawnwings Necrozma because Dawnwings Necrozma is going to be able to knock out this without being at a risk of letting my opponent take three prizes um, it's gonna fail the soldier ball just get some cards out of my deck nick doesn't play any counter stadium so that altar of the moon is going to be good enough and then retreating here to the um don wings necrozma sorry the uh, the name of the attackers right now is just getting stuck in my head don wings necrozma going to use uh dark flash and take the knockout So there you go, a Lightning Energy and a Hone Edge down. This is a Sprint. One, two, three, four. Oh, so, uh, so we redid this. Uh, this is something um, random, but uh, I think it does matter. He, um, he's looking at what's going to cause him to lose right now and he sees that he's going to take a knockout on the active and then there's the Mimikyu Gengar and the Eevee Snorlax. The Eevee Snorlax needs uh, a Psychic and three energy on it to knock out this Dubblade but the Mimikyu Gengar needs just the two energies which he already has on the board um, to use Poltergeist and so Nick didn't want to sprint because he didn't need anything but also he didn't want to make it so that his hand had enough trainers in it to get knocked out. Um, so there's a psychic off the top. So I could triple psychic recharge onto the Eevee Snorlax. I think I'm trying to see if I can win the game this turn, knocking out a Tapu Lele. Okay, so Giratina is going to come down, put a damage counter onto the Tapu Lele and the Genesect. One and one on each with Distortion Door. A Psychic on the active is going to allow me to treat with Altar of the Moon, even though it's facing Nick. Uh, triple Psychic Recharge onto the Giratina, and retreating and just taking a knockout with this Giratina. So he's going to have to find a Guzma to win the game, uh, and that's even after missing a Energy Attachment. So uh, if anything from this, I think the Tool Drum deck really showed up. Genesect goes down, Nest Ball to thin out the deck. He needs an energy and a Guzma. He's got an energy and a double colorless left. Uh, didn't see any Guzma. Okay, there's a Guzma right there. Uh, so he still has outs. Let's see if he can draw into it. Uh, he sprints away the Cynthia. One, two, three, four. Uh, and he draws the Guzma. Uh, but it's not game because he doesn't have the second energy. He realized that... Uh, oh, wait. I don't have the second energy on the board. And he just concedes because he sees that the writing's on the wall. I have one prize left, and he uh, he had two energies left in his deck, and he wasn't able to draw them. And he oh, and then his last two prizes were uh, double colorless. It seems to be uh, he accidentally picked up the altar of the moon, but we figured that out. Luckily, this is the last game. But uh, thank you guys for tuning in with us and checking out this testing grounds. If you are interested in checking out more of these videos, there will be more on the channel. So make sure to like and subscribe so you can get those updates as soon as these videos get posted. And then as always, if you really enjoy our content you can check out our patreon page where we have some great benefits we write personal articles we review decks we post our list before we play in any tournament so make sure to check out that the link is in the description below but for now this is xander bennett signing out thank you for watching this testing grounds